Hi, it's the third day of the Mop Europeans here in Quivero, in France. I'm with Mike Lennon, a famous sail designer and a manufacturer. Is that, can I call you that? Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, when was the first Mop sail you built or designed? Oh, 2007, I think, for me personally. Right, so you did it for yourself? No, I did it for a friend. So mm. he'd got a prowler, he got one of the very early, uh -huh, okay. one of the very early foilers mm -hmm. and he used to work with me at Hyde Sales. Mm -hmm. um, a guy called Paul Brillerton, he used to went to the Olympics, he's a well-known coach and so on in, in the UK. Um, he went to the Olympics in the 470. Um, so he asked, he got him off and he asked me if I'd make a sale for him. So that's when I made my first sale. And then he said, you've got to go and sail it because you've got to look at your own sale. So I took it out and then I decided I had to have one. <laughs> <I'm off. laughs> yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when, when did you start full on with the mob sales production? Well, sales? when I started sailing them, so in 2007 or 8, I think I got my mm. first boat mm -hmm. and um, I got a blade rider and I started making sales for myself. Mm. So, and then other people became interested and, you know, as as you hope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we started making a few and uh, it just sort of, you know, got more and more popular. But then in 2015, I think it was, I left Hyde Sales mm -hmm. and started my own brand. And that's when I put a lot, I, I was at Hyde Sales before that. And the main focus of Hyde Sales was always the OEM business mm. with Laser and with RS yeah. and so on. And so. Also in yacht sales with, mm -hmm. with bigger boats and so on. Not so much on, I mean, it's nice to sell dinghy sales, but in classes like the Moth, it wasn't the main focus then. Yeah. So when I moved into having my own business, uh, I kind of made it the main focus was, mm -hmm. was to sell, make and sell Moth sales. Cool. And so it's now, what, uh, more than 10 years that you are designing and, and building mob sales? Yeah, more than 10 years. Yeah, yeah. What, what was the development or, or how do you see well, where, where it came from and yeah. where it's going to? The sales were very basic mm -hmm. uh, when we started. They had glass fibre non-tapered bands. Mm -hmm. They were made out of fairly, uh, fairly sort of normal cloth, or normal, you know, un, un, um, unexotic materials, polyesters and just film sails and so on, nothing nothing particularly flash. Mm -hmm. But over time, they just become more and more developed. Um, and as you're looking for more and more, uh, you know, trying to improve the sales by increments, mm -hmm. you just keep, oh, we'll try this, we'll do that, we'll do that. And, and slowly but surely, you know, we end up, when we first started with carbon battens, they were an option, mm -hmm. which not many people had. Now they're just standard, Every, you know, we just sell, that's all we offer now. Uh, and the materials, you know, we go with um, with uh, things like the Cuban fiber type materials mm -hmm. or membrane. So that's kind of where we are now. So we've got most of the sales are made from <clears throat> a cloth that Dimension Polyant make called Ilex, mm -hmm. which is just Aramids and Dyneema filaments on, on glue films which are then laminated together and with no film in it and that's um, so that's the technology of the Ilex and then up till then we're using membranes with clear films mm -hmm. and that's still a that's still a great technology that's, that's, that's not out of date at all and we and I still continue to play with that technology as well to keep mm -hmm. it in the background mm -hmm. So. Okay, so, but that's that's on material side yes. and on the shape shape wise. So on shape was a big change, um, a big change in. I started working very closely with them, um, with uh, with Chris Rashley, mm -hmm. and he was working in turn with Kevin Elway, and they pushed. They were pushing for deeper and deeper sails. So Chris said to me once, "I want to be able to go downwind with a deep sail and a Cunningham on." Mm -hmm. So that required quite a big change. Um, so. They did some work on how much the mass would bend before they broke, and uh, and so did we they break many masts. I don't think so. No, I think you could you could bend them a lot before they broke. So we just ended up putting more and more and more and more love curving. Mm -hmm. and that's kind of we've refined from that. You know, we've actually come back a bit now. We're not quite as love curvy as that. Uh, the problem with going too love curvy is it makes in the marginal foiling the sails can be a bit too deep, mm -hmm. difficult to get the flow to attach, and as soon as you foil, the sails are massively deep, and you. You're rushing around trying to get Kieran Cunningham on. So we've backed off a bit to make the sail a bit more progressive as through as you 
you know, as you as you get yeah. sailing, um, but they're still pretty deep compared to where they were ten years ago. And wh when you think it's heading that the sail design will shape? I think it's just back. We're back to refinements now because that was a big step change, mm -hmm. and now we're just, obviously the deck, the, deck, the deck sweeper was another step yeah. change. And, and there's also this trend of bigger and bigger decks. Well, that trend has come and gone to some degree. Mm -hmm. I mean, people have gone as far back as 14, 1500, and then you can't sail a boat anymore. Mm -hmm. So they then go back again. But most people are on it somewhere between 12, 1200 and, and a meter. Mm -hmm. So that's the range most people are in now. Right. Good. And you obviously sail an exporter here. Yep. Um, let's talk about the boat. Yep. Um, the first thing that's noticeable about the Exploder is it's a long way, everything's further back. When I sailed my previous boat, I couldn't use um, a 1200 deck sweeper because I had so little room behind it. Mm -hmm. When I got this boat, it was set with 1200, so the, the bridles here are set for 1200 deck sweeper. Mm -hmm. And I was, in my head, I was going to move it all forward because I thought I wouldn't be able to sail it with 1200. But you can. 1200 mm -hmm. is. I would say in this boat, 1200s like 105 or one meter mm -hmm. in in another boat, in a, in a beaker sail or, or you know or another boat. So there's a lot of space, and obviously you can see most of the wings and most of the boats finish about there. And this just gives you a much better platform or bigger platform, whether it's better or not, mm -hmm. arguable. But it's it's an easier platform to use than I think any other moth I've ever sailed. I haven't sailed a beaker, but. It's certainly, compared to any other model sale, this platform, this, the ergonomics of this area are really, really good. Mm. And uh, yeah, the shape of the bow is pretty interesting here. Uh, it's much different than the other yeah. boats. Uh, what, what's, what's the idea behind? I don't know, I didn't design it. <laughs> <laughs> so noticeably, it has this, uh, how they call it, from America's Cup, the, this... Um, sort of a skeg or whatever, is, yeah, yeah, the skeg. Yeah. Uh, that has to do something with our dynamics and uh, yeah, the interesting feature here is this uh, room for the systems down here. Huh? Yes, so everything's hidden, everything's very aerodynamic. The skeg I think is to do with, with, um, with span, mm -hmm. the span from, so the span of the rig isn't just from the top of the sail to the bottom of the sail, it actually can be from the top of the sail to the water. Mm -hmm. So you've got, you've, got the, you've got the sail, you've got the hull, and then you've got the foils. So there is a constant attachment from the water all the way down. And each, each one of those, each intersection, if you like, where the sail meets the boat and where the boat meets the foils, you get like an aerodynamic notch in where you start forming vortices and things. Now I understand and don't, you know, I'm, I didn't design this, but I've heard, I understand the thinking is that this skeg helps with that. Uh, helps the the air around the hull into the centerboard and so on, and it helps smooth that sort of notching out. I, I, I but I say that's second-hand information to me. That's what I understand. But certainly, when I was involved with the thin air, because uh, I was heavily involved in that, we were thinking about making the centerboard very wide at the top. So sort of doing that to the centerboard to help again to to reduce that sort of to try and get the airflow from the very top to the very bottom to be to be smoother and less notchy or less as vortices forming at each point. So that's what we thought about with doing that with the centerboard. But we were worried about wetted area and so on and so on. So we never actually tried it. But we were talked about putting plates on the back and you know printing bits to try and see if it actually helped. But I think you're then into very small gains that you could barely, you'd barely be able to measure. But I, I would think that's got something to do with all that kind of thing. Okay, that was the boat and um, how you like the regatta here? It's, it's been good, it's been windier than I wanted. I prefer it because I'm not very big, I prefer it a bit lighter. It'd be nice today if it does what it says, we get some light, lighter races. Okay, all the best for the next regatta. Thank you, and to you. Thanks.